That's right. I, we forgot happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday to Zach first. Thank you, honey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, all right. Come and, come and stand on my other side, all right? <laughs> you can see the right hand, the hand. Yeah. Um, you guys all know Zach. Um, it's been a journey. I mean, uh, 28 years ago, uh, I asked Jesus to save me, and he, he took me off the road of destruction and put me on the, the path to glory. Chris was a part of that as, as we were at uh, Church on the Rock, and uh, uh, Fernando, too, he's not here. They're, they're on vacation. so. But uh, Fernando's very special to Chris. He, he, he took him under his wing when, when uh, he needed somebody to, to be there for him. And uh, I'm really sorry he's, he's not here, but uh, Fernando and me, we're probably best friends. And uh, uh, we've been waiting for Chris to come to this church for 20, 22 years. <laughs> and now he's here, and, and I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, this guy is so special. Uh, uh, I can't say enough good things about him. But I think... He's the reason you guys are here because when you guys came and visit, Zach just he he wanted to come to this church. He wanted to come to this church. He wanted to come to this church. And uh, if you know much about Zach, I mean, Jesus is just just Jesus has just got him in his hands and and he's molding and shaping him and leading him and guiding him. And and, uh, and uh, I'm just so proud that he's in our church and 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 doing what he does and uh, uh we were supposed this was supposed to be his debut here to preach but i got the covid so he had to fill in for me and uh i haven't have i haven't even seen the, the the thing the the message yet i'm gonna i'm gonna look at it probably when we get on vacation mm -hmm. but I, everybody said he did a great job and i know he did but i still want to look at it um I was just wiped out. I had 200, year, 200 hours at my dad's house. Patty was sick with the COVID, and and it was a nightmare. And, and uh, I just, I was so wiped out, I just even, didn't even want to do anything but just sit there when I did get home. So, um, And then he's going to take care of my mom and dad while I'm gone. Uh, this guy's just, he's just got, he's just got the heart of Jesus. He's got the love of Jesus, and, and uh, uh, we are just... Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited about having this guy stand with me and and be with me. You know, he's he's uh he's just something else. But I just want to, if you guys know the Bible, and I'm sure most of you do, the the Jesus laid hands and and blessed uh, those he laid hand on, and the apostles are the same thing in the Book of Acts, and they laid hands, and and I just want to lay hands on Zach and the right hand of of God's. Uh, grace and favor and I just want to put a special blessing on Zach and uh, I know the Lord already has but I want to do it too I'm going to jump in and get on it too so Holy Father mighty God we just ask you Lord just to just to fill Zach with the Holy Spirit and the power and the love and the determination Lord that that I know that you have for him Lord let him walk in courage and in faith and in strength Lord and and just bless his life and bless uh, uh all that you called him to do Lord we just pray that uh you would continue to be with him and and uh Lead him and guide him. Give him direction, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And just uh, just pour your blessing, grace, and mercy on him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. I'm done talking. I'm going to leave it, leave it to you. Now I, get, now I get to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Who's ready to stay here three hours? Yeah. <laughs> oh, very touchy. Is that too loud? Yeah. All right. Ah, thank you for coming. This is awesome. This is awesome. Now, when I was right, trying to write out my message for the past couple of weeks, it was, uh, I want to say it was difficult. It was different because I preach at the nursing home and uh, that's pretty easy. You know, I go to God, pray at night, and God gives me a message. 
And, you know, I love everyone who's there. And uh, actually, one of the activities director, uh, Ruth, is here, and I think that's really, really cool. Uh, but God's given me another family over there. But when I was writing this message, my heart was, like, all over the place. I was, not that I was confused about God, but that I was, I'm not worthy enough. You know, I don't know enough about God to be talking about God. And so, really, the message today is going to be about Jesus wants your heart. And he wants your heart to say, here am I, I'm yours. So the, song, the first song that we sang as a group, it was called uh, I, the Lord, and Sea and Sky. And in that, it's here, here am I, Lord. Is it I, Lord? And that question that I don't know if anyone's really asked themselves or to ask God, um, um, is it me, Lord? Am I called to do something? Has anyone really said in their heart, here I am, God, to be submissive to him, to be obedient to him. And so I want to talk about Jesus wants your heart. He wants your heart to say, here am I, I'm yours. Now, the reason why um, he wants your heart is because when your heart is towards God, that's when you're able to receive all the blessings and rewards that he wants to give you. Because why would he give someone all these blessings if their heart is not towards him? You have to think about these things. The reason why Jesus wants your heart, Christians or sinners or whatever it may be, um, people who believe in God, people who don't believe in God, the reason why he wants all of our hearts is so he can set us free, so he can make us free. And so I'm pretty sure here everyone believes in Jesus, but if you don't, the biggest thing is that he just wants your heart. He wants your heart guided towards him, a heart that's loving towards him, a heart that's loving towards others. So um, with that, let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, God, I yield to you, I submit to you. Whatever I say, Lord, let it be your words, not mine. Bless it, Lord, Heavenly Father, and let me preach with authority, God, uh, a gift that you have given me, Lord Jesus Christ, to preach your word from your heart, God. And so, Lord, I just thank you so much for allowing everyone to be here. Whoever was here was meant to be here, and whoever wasn't was not meant to be here, God. So, Lord, um, give us your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding of your holy word and of the Christian life you call us to live. In Jesus Christ's holy name, the only name we pray, amen. So, Jesus wants your heart. So, the first place we're going to go to is Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. It's kind of in the middle of the Bible in the Old Testament. It's uh, after Psalm, and I'm going to wait a little bit. I think it's really cool is that, uh, that the message that God has given me, give your heart to God, is pretty cool is because that's what I was getting tested on, is my heart truly full, like with God enough to preach His Word. Because there's some things I wanted to say, oh, this verse sounds good, this verse sounds good, but... You know, I want to make it plain and simple. So Proverbs chapter 23, um, verse 26. The Bible says this, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. I'm going to read it again. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Rather, how about this? My child, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Now, I think that's something that God's telling all of us here, especially me, is because not only does he say, give me your heart, because that's a choice. You have the choice to give God your heart. But he also says this, which is really cool. This is a couple questions I thought of. Why does he say that? And why does he want us to observe his ways? The second part of the verse, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Pretty cool how he uh, words that, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Sometimes we don't want to look at God's ways. Sometimes we don't want to follow God's ways, right? We're too stubborn to do it God's way. We want to do it our way. We want to fix it our way, whatever it may be. He says, my child, let thine eyes observe my ways. Why? What's so special about his ways? Well, the Bible says... 
For God's ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We, can, we cannot comprehend God's ways, because God's ways might be taking you through the mud and the dirt and the trenches before He exalts you, before He blesses you. We don't know why bad things happen. We don't know why sad things happen or, or why our lives are uh, the way they are. All we know is from what God says, observe my ways. Because they are ways of life. God's ways are ways of peace, of love, of joy, of prosperity. But they're also ways of correction. Because the message here is about, give me your heart. But what if our heart is full of sin? What if our heart is full of anger, of frustration? What if our heart is not forgiving someone? It's holding a grudge against someone. What if our heart has lust in it, has iniquity in it? My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. The Bible says this about God's ways. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy in thy presence. Because God's ways is ways of joyfulness, ways of peace, strength, courage, boldness, confidence. When you're walking in God's ways, there's something about, like, wow, God, this is nice, you know? When you're walking in God's ways, when you're listening to God, there's a special holiness that's attached to you individually. Because God goes to everyone who's here special. Not that he has favorites, but that everyone is different. Everyone has their own unique special relationship with God, with Jesus. So, with that, My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. Now, the question I'm going to ask you guys, will you give God your heart? as a Christian or as an unbeliever, will you give God your heart? Now, if you said yes to that one, you may go to the second question. Will you let God, or will you let your eyes observe God's ways? Okay? Because just like salvation, just because, um, just because God died on the cross for us, that doesn't mean that he has to force his salvation upon us. It's a free gift. Does that make sense? It's a free choice. Just like Adam and Eve, they chose to eat the apple and then therefore sin came into the world. It's a free choice. You know, people get scared of hell a lot and you shouldn't get scared of hell. All hell is, is the opposite of God. If God is so good, so great, so loving, so kind, so precious and holy and joyful and peace, the opposite makes sense what hell is. It's the separation from God. And so God says this, hey, if you don't love me, if you don't want to give you, me your heart, if you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. You know, that's your choice. I will not force you against, um, I will not force you against, uh, you know, towards me. So then that's why he sends us to hell. You know, we didn't want to be with God, so why would we want to be with God in eternity? Does that make sense? But, um, but yeah, but I'm not going to talk about that. I just want to talk about our heart and how our heart should be towards God. How our heart should be um, in a submissive, loving understanding that He is our Heavenly Father and that our ways do not bring forth blessings. They don't. So, um, another verse I think is really, really cool is if we can turn back a little bit to Proverbs chapter 23, or Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Um, yeah, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Okay. So God's word says this, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 6 says this, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Let's do something new today. Whatever you think you know about Jesus, whatever you think you know about God, throw it out. Whatever you feel about God, throw it out. Let's start fresh. 
Let's go back to the fundamentals, the foundation. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Whatever you think you know about Jesus, misconceptions, you think Jesus is this way, Jesus is that way, let's just focus on our heart towards God and God will show you the true Jesus, the true word, the true truth of who he is. Let me ask you again. Will you give God your full heart to trust in him with all your heart? I know I said that in my heart. I know I said, God, I'm yours. Is because there was a hardship I went through and I could not go through it alone. And so with God, he, get, he put me in a position where I was fully submissive to him. Um, I was walking in sin. I was walking in lustfulness and iniquity. And um, I treated my mother and my father weren't the best either. Um, so God, through my hardship, really purified my heart. He really allowed me to um, expose the sin that I was walking in, expose the sin I was living in, and through that, me getting close to Him, me giving Him my heart, all of my heart, and through the ten months, God has given me ability to preach His Word because my heart is cleansed, my heart is purified. Amen. And with that, there's a lot of blessings that come, his, come our way. Amen. Preaching, the nursing home, my relationship with my mom and my dad, to love someone with, who, who needs love is pastor's parents, Oscar and Sally. Like my, gran my grandmother passed away this February. And through all this, God has given me grandparents. You know, I never really truly had grandparents. Because my first grandfather died when I was, you know, young. Then my other grandfather died when I was, you know, kind of, a family is important. And I still have my grandmother, my mom's mom. And... And she's going downhill. But the thing is, is that God has given me um, more grandparents, more love in my life. And I think that's all we, we all truly want is to be loved. And so what's really, really cool is that what God has done in my life is because not only did I tell God, I will trust in you with all my heart, but I said, I'm not going to lean on my own ways. I want your ways. And so he showed me his ways to be a servant to others to really help others, to um, be there for someone who needs their help. So the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. That's a promise. He will direct your path if your heart is truly towards God. If your heart really wants to get to cl um, gets close to God, who really yearns for God, who really wants to get to know God more, God will show you the ways to go. He won't let his child just go out in the wilderness and just be on their own. He will teach us each and every day on how to live a good Christian life. And living a good Christian life is not easy. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be attacked. You're going to be doubtful. You're going to be angry sometimes. God, why? God, why? I'm doing all this for you. But God says, just trust in me. There was a lot of, lot of nights where I, it looked like, where am I going? God, what is, what is the whole point of me going through this? Just trust in me, Zach. Just trust in me. I trusted in, trusted in God, and look at me now. I get to preach on my birthday. Amen. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about the heart. Do you trust God with your heart? It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. That's pretty cool. In all your ways, everything in life, you, you trust Him when you're happy. You acknowledge Him when you're sad, when you're angry. Remember the very first verse I read, Give me thine heart. It doesn't matter if your heart's upset. It doesn't matter if your heart's angry towards God. It doesn't matter if your heart has a hatred towards God. God just says, give me your heart. It doesn't matter if your heart's full of sin. Give me your heart. Because he will show us how to live. Okay. The second part of that one verse that I read to you guys, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. Let's talk about that. Let thine eyes observe my ways. What is the ways of God? You know, I keep talking about it. The biggest answer is if you don't know the ways of God, read the Bible. But 
if, uh, if you really don't know the ways of God, let me, let me be simple with it. From Psalm chapter 37, verse 34. This, these are the ways of the Lord. And I want us to actually go here. I was going to read it, but I want us to go here. And this is where I want us to stay. And I want us to nonstop look at it, read it, and really have it in our heart to say, God, I, I do want to follow. Psalm chapter 37, verse 34. Psalm 37, verse 34. This is my life verse. This is the verse that God has shown me throughout the 10 months of my hardship, throughout the ups and the downs. Basically, the whole foundation of my life is this verse. You guys ready? Ow. It says this. God's word says this. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. Wow. That's a big one. Waiting on the Lord. I had to wait on the Lord. I had to wait on the Lord, you know, when I didn't know where I was going. I had to wait on the Lord when I wanted to do something rather than to do God's ways. There's an anxiousness. There's a stressfulness in that when you're waiting on God. What I learned during when I was waiting on God is waiting on God is not worrying that you're, you're not going to receive um, the blessings of God. We're, um, waiting on God is not worrying that um, the outcome isn't going to be what you want it. You know? Waiting on God isn't like stressing about the situation, dwelling upon the situation, whatever your hardship is. Waiting on God is not... Oh, God, I should have did this. God, I should have done that. Waiting on God is a, is a peacefulness. There's a joyfulness. That, hey, as I wait on my Heavenly Father, as He works out everything that's in my life, I can just rest in His arms and know that I am taken care of. That I am provided for. Wait on the Lord and keep His way. God doesn't want you to wait on Him angry. God doesn't want you to wait on Him stressed out. God doesn't want you to wait on Him, you trying to figure things out, to you trying to make things happen. And I think with the heart, we always want to do something our way. And I think really today, for all of us, especially me, I think we really should surrender to God. To really give God all of our hearts is because everyone here is going through something. I don't know what, but everyone in their heart, their mind, their body, you guys are going through something. And I think God wants me to tell you guys, just wait on Him and keep His way. Because when you do that, He shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Okay? Keeping God's way is something that's so important for all of us as Christians. And it's, and it's the most important thing as a Christian to do is to keep God's ways. is to listen to our Heavenly Father. To obey and to love His commandments. And if you don't know His commandments, you know, I encourage you guys to go you know, read and learn what they are. But if I, if to keep it simple, keeping God's ways, keeping God's commandments is, is just to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Keeping God's ways is to depart from evil, to do good, to seek peace and pursue it. Because my whole message is about having our heart towards God. And when you have a heart towards God, that heart says, God, I do not want to sin against you. I don't want to walk in sin. I don't want to walk in evilness. I don't want to walk in iniquity. I want to follow you because your ways are the ways of life. That's what your heart should say to God. And I said it last Sunday, but everyone here is also walking in their own sin. Everyone here has a sin that they know that they shouldn't be sinning. That they shouldn't be following, talking, acting, have it in their heart. There is a sin that everyone is going through. And that's the truth. You guys know what I'm talking about. 
But it's not necessarily about the sin that's in our heart. It's about us going to God. God, forgive me of my sin. Help me, Lord. I don't want to live a life that's full of sin, that's full of um, robbery, that's full of anger, of stress, of worries, God. I don't want to do it my way no more, God. I want to follow your ways, God. I'm tired of living the life that I'm living is because of my own decision making. God, right here and right now, God, I want to follow your ways. I want to listen to you. I finally want to open up my Bible and read what you have to say. I finally want to come to church, God, not to just um, say, hey, I came to church, but to come to church to get to know you, to learn of you. Lord, I want my heart to say, I will depart from evil. I will not sin against my God. It's because after everything you have done for me, God, I, I do not want to sin against you. Lord, I want my heart to say, I want to love others. I want to help others. I want to do things for your glory, not for me. Lord, I want to be humble. My pride, my ego, my uh, arrogancy has led me in a way where I cannot come back from. But you, Lord, you can lead me back home. You can set me free, Lord. You can make me free. Can you guys really say that prayer? Or is it more like, I don't want God? in my life. Yet again, it's a decision we all have to give, we all have to make. We all know Jesus, but do you know Jesus? Do you know that Jesus, he's our brother. Our Heavenly Father sent him to die for us. And we all know the story of salvation. But do you really realize the love that it takes to give your only son up? For people that do not care about you, that constantly sin against you. If we're talking about the ways of God, that's the ways of God right there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's anyone, no matter if they're good or bad, they believe in him, they believe on the name of Jesus Christ, they will be saved. They will have everlasting life. Yet again, it's a decision, it's a choice. I do want to say is that in our lives we get to know Jesus and let's say you don't believe in Jesus and you ask Jesus to save you right now in your life Satan will non-stop try to attack you to rip you away from God even Christians like me I didn't mean to spit my bad <laughs> even Christians like me and pastor we get attacked constantly Satan does not want us to get to go to know God Satan does not want us to get close to God, to follow God's ways. He will do everything in His power to rob us, to get us away from church, to get us away from singing to God, to get us away from praying. God, uh, God wants us to pray, but Satan does not want us to pray. He does not want us to have a special relationship with our Heavenly Father. Okay? If I can, if I, if I can say one thing of, on God's behalf, is that just because when things get tough, don't run away from me. When things get tough, run to our Heavenly Father. I ran to my Heavenly Father. And not to boast, but look where I am now. I get to celebrate my birthday preaching God's Word. So, you guys are here for me. So if you can do one thing for me, do not run away from God. Run to God. Run to our Heavenly Father. He's been waiting for you. He's longing for you. Even me, even me who knows Jesus, sometimes I can slip away from Him. Go back to Jesus. I do want to read a story out of Luke chapter 23. I think this is pretty cool because it doesn't apply to unbelievers. Um, all of unbelievers. It also applies to Christians who already believe in Jesus. So if we can go to Luke chapter 23, verse 32. Give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. <laughs> Luke chapter 23, verse, 20, or verse 32. 23, verse 32. And I'm going to read. I think everyone's there. Amen, James. Amen. And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. 
There was two people also being crucified with Jesus. That's what it's saying. And when they were come to a place which is called Calvary, they, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the, uh, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the, uh, the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. As Jesus was getting beaten, as getting whipped, as getting spit upon, mocked, all this, all the evilness that's been put upon Jesus, he still says, forgive them for they know not what they do. Even for Christians, even though he's done everything for us, and we, 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 we sin against him, we, we drift away from him, Jesus still forgives us. You guys understand that? Jesus forgives you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus forgives you. It's okay, my child. Come back home. I'm going to continue in verse 39. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. So there was one person on Jesus's, I think it was his left hand, he was saying, hey, if you're Christ, save us and save yourself. If you're God, save us. But the guy on his right hand says, no, we're evil men. We deserve death, but this man has done nothing wrong. That's the faith that, that an, an evil person, and the people who were crucified back in the day, they weren't a, a, per, a person who just stole something or punched a person in the face. No, these are people who killed and murdered and did evil constantly. These are bad people. And the guy on his right hand says, we deserve death, but this man has done nothing wrong. I'm going to continue. And Jesus said, and Jesus said unto, uh, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee this day, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. A person who did nothing but evil his whole life, who did nothing but wrong, and sinned against God his whole life, all he said was, Remember me? That man's heart, that moment, was towards God was towards God and in that moment his heart was asking for forgiveness and in that moment his heart said I believe in you Jesus and that man is saved that man is in heaven right now so that proves Jesus proves to us that it doesn't matter what you have done in your life it doesn't matter how much sin you're living in as a Christian or an unbeliever it doesn't matter he can forgive anything the whole message is, my son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. I want everyone to pay attention. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. We don't have to live life all alone thinking we can't do this, we can't do that. I'm stressing about this. I don't know this. Give God your heart. He wants to teach you. He wants to show you a good way to live life. A life where you don't have to worry about finances. You don't have to worry about emotion. You don't have to worry about anxiety and stress in your head. Why, why would we try to fix that our own selves? Do we really go to God in prayer and ask Him to help us? Or do we kind of just, oh, Jesus, uh, and all doubtful? When you go to God, I want you guys to be bold. I want you guys to be confident that I can go anytime to my Heavenly Father. Because my Heavenly Father loves me, my Heavenly Father forgives me, my Heavenly Father wants the best for me. Jesus himself says, I am come 
to give you life and life more abundantly. The reason why God wants us to have a heart that's towards Him and for our eyes to observe His ways, it's not, not all so we can go to heaven, but it's also so we can have a blessed, awesome life here on earth. And that doesn't mean we're not going to have hardships in our lives. That doesn't mean we're not going to see death. That doesn't mean that we're not going to get robbed or hurt or beaten, whatever. But that's the faith. That it doesn't matter what we go through. We have Jesus to call upon. We have Jesus to rely on. It's all about Jesus. I can't express that enough. If you don't believe in Jesus, get to know him. Come to church. I will help you. I will teach you. God will teach you himself. And um, I think with that, it's just... My heart has never been in such a way that's towards God my whole life. And I, and I, and I believed in God. You know, I was baptized as, at, when I was five years old. And I believed in Jesus. But there is something special about God breaking my heart. God allowing me to go through this is because I have not... Got, uh, I have not been so close to God as I am right now. And even though I was trying to write out my message, my heart, you know, sometimes gets scattered, it gets confused, it gets dismayed. But I do know with full confidence, I can say I will not sin against God. I don't want to sin against God. I want to follow your ways, Jesus. I want to get closer to you, Jesus. And of course I'll sin. Of course I'm going to say something stupid. I'm going to make Jesus look bad. But my heart says I don't want to sin against you. No more. So the first question I asked was, will you give God all of your heart? Will you trust God with all of your heart? If you're saved, you trust God with everlasting life, but do you trust Him with the small things of life? If you said yes, God, all of my heart is yours. And will you let your eyes observe his ways? Will you really put in the work, put in the time to get to know God? Or is it that we just come to church on Christmas and Easter and think we live good lives? If we really love Jesus, we will come to his house. We will learn about his ways. We will get closer to him is because after everything he's done for us, I think we can give him one hour a week. So I don't want to put us down, because we all know we all mess up, but I think here we can understand that, hey, God's ready to forgive us as long as we go to him and say, will you forgive me? So with that, I think I'll just lead out in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, God, um, I just pray, Lord, I, I spoke your words and not mine, God, that I spoke from my heart, Lord, I spoke from your heart, Lord, is that all it is, Lord, is you just want our heart. You know, you just want our heart to say, here am I. I'm ready, God. I'm yours. Teach me your ways. I'm not in the position to teach them your ways, God. I'm just here to tell them God's ready to teach you his ways. So, Lord, um, I do pray, Lord, that you bless the rest of the day. You let us all have fun and enjoy the rest of the day, God that we are loving, Lord, towards each other. We help each other out, God. But most importantly, Lord, that we look towards you um, in our struggles, in our pain, in our sorrow, in our anxiety, in our stress, God, that we do not want to handle it our ways. We want your ways. For your ways are higher than our ways, and your thoughts are higher than your thoughts. God, you think peacefully towards us. God, you think awesomeness towards us, God. And, and you just want the best for us, God. So there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be shy of. We can come to your throne of grace looking for help in time of need to say, God, I need you. Jesus, help me. In the name of my Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray, Jesus Christ, amen. So with that, will you give God your heart?